Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. Did you know that you can sublimate onto cardstock? Yes, it is possible. And it can really help you create some fantastic projects with really fun effects. But there are a few very important rules to get this to work properly. As I often say, your materials really matter. So I've tested some different cardstocks to save you time, money, and just save you from getting some really disappointing results. So what's the best way to sublimate on cardstock? Pull up a chair here at my craft table and let's find out together. If I ask you how to sublimate on cardstock, your first response might be, Jennifer, you can't do that. Sublimation needs polymers to work and cardstock is paper, not polymers. <laughs> so normally, yes, you would be absolutely right. But I found out that white glitter is polymer based. So then maybe cardstock covered in glitter will work, right? <laughs> so, it does, and I made these super cute cake toppers to test glitter cardstock brands and ways to sublimate them for the best results, with or without print thin cut. I learned a lot along the way, but again, the biggest thing I learned is that not all glitter cardstock is made the same. Wait until you see how some of my tests came out. Now to sublimate on cardstock, you'll need your standard sublimation equipment. So a printer filled with sublimation ink, sublimation paper, heat resistant tape, and a heat press. You can see all of the supplies and equipment that I use to sublimate on cardstock in the description below this video. And I am gonna show you how to prepare and make this super cute sloth design. Isn't he or she cute? I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> I'll also show you how to cut out the shape of it using a Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine, but you can use any machine that can do print then cut for this. And my butterfly and watercolor designs use the same techniques. You can find written instructions for them on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash 537. That's also where you can learn how to customize your own cake topper using glitter cardstock and sublimation. So let me show you where to get my free designs because they are too cute not to share with you. And then we will learn how to sublimate on cardstock. Oh, and if you just want to know the method for sublimating on glitter cardstock, just skip to timestamp 715 in this video. But if you'd like to know how to sublimate and cut the cardstock to fit your sublimated design, either through print then cut or through another technique I have, keep watching. Step one, get my sublimation cake topper designs. First, download my cake topper designs at jennifermaker.com slash 537. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top and then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 537 and click the link to download the designs. If you're not sure how to unzip files, just go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to unzip and upload designs. Inside the folder, you'll find a bunch of PNG designs that you can use, including four butterflies, a cute sloth, a watercolor birthday sentiment, a watercolor frame, and a square watercolor image. And if you'd like to try print then cut, there are three SVG designs that go along with these. A cute birthday cake topper for the butterflies, a congratulations design for the sloth, and a customizable watercolor birthday design. Now I tried two different techniques to sublimate a design onto cardstock. So let's see how both work using our cute little sloth. Step two, prepare, cut, and sublimate your cake topper design. Option A, print then cut. Now, if you haven't used the print then cut feature in a while or ever, be sure to calibrate your machine following my steps at jennifermaker.com slash calibration. Here's how the sloth SVG looks on my canvas in Cricut Design Space. But the cute sloth is in the PNG, right? So click upload, then upload image, click browse and select the sloth PNG. On the upload screen, select Complex and click Continue. 
Now you don't need to make any changes on the next screen, so click Apply and Continue. Then select Print Then Cut Image and click Upload. Under Recent Uploads, select the sloth and then click Add to Canvas. Now we have everything we need. Use the minus sign in the corner to zoom out so you can see everything. Now the PNG comes in big because it's high resolution, but we can fix that. With the lock icon at the top closed, change the sloth's width to 5.6 inches. Drag it over the top or design and then click Arrange and send to back. I want to cut the congratulations from adhesive vinyl, so I'll select the pieces in the layers panel. Use the color box to change them to light gray. Now they'll cut on a different mat. And you're ready to cut your cake topper. Make sure the correct machine is selected and then click make it. On the prepare screen, make sure your print then cut mat's material size is 8.5 by 11 inches to match your sublimation paper. And remember to turn on the mirror toggle since we're sublimating our design. Adjust the material size for your other mats to match your paper choices. Now select the first mat and then click continue. On the make screen, click send to printer. Now your screen might look different, but you can use mine as a guide. Use the printer drop down to select your sublimation printer. Also toggle on add bleed and use system dialog. Now click print and then minimize or move your Cricut window out of the way to see the print dialog box. Make sure your sublimation printer is selected and set the paper type to an option similar to premium photo mat or something like that. And you want your quality to be the best available. Keep anything related to flipping or mirroring unchecked since we already mirrored our design. Load your sublimation paper according to your packaging and printer and then click print. And then let the printed image dry so it won't smudge. Now since sublimation creates fumes, be sure to turn on a fan and or open a window to improve your ventilation. You can use any flat heat press that gets hot enough for sublimation and covers the entire design, including the registration marks. I'm going to use my Cricut Easy Press. So preheat the Easy Press to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius and set the time to 45 seconds. Place a piece of 12 by 12 inch white cardstock on the pressing mat to protect it. Put your white glitter cardstock face up on the protective cardstock. Use a lint roller on the glitter cardstock to remove any excess glitter bits. Place a piece of white butcher paper on top of the glitter cardstock and preheat it for 10 seconds. Remove the protective sheet and let the cardstock cool for a few seconds. Turn your sublimation print face down and line it up precisely on the glitter cardstock. Make sure the top and left edges match as perfectly as possible so that your Cricut can accurately read and cut the design. Use heat resistant tape to secure the sublimation print and the layers to the pressing mat to hold everything in place. Cover the project with white butcher paper to protect your press from ink. Press the design for 45 seconds without any extra pressure. When the time is up, remove the press by lifting it straight up to avoid any ghosting or blurring. Then remove the top butcher paper and let the design cool for a few seconds. Carefully remove the tape and reveal your design. Now place the sublimated glitter cardstock face up on a green standard grip machine mat. Make sure the top and left edges match the mat guides. Put a piece of white copy paper on top and use a brayer to secure the print to the mat. The paper protects the ink and glitter. Now back in Cricut Design Space, click Edit under the Print Then Cut Mat Preview. Toggle off mirror to keep the Cricut from cutting in the wrong spot since the design is already sublimated. And then click Done. Select glitter cardstock and set the pressure to more for the mat. Load the mat into your Cricut. Make sure your fine point blade is clean and in the clamp. Press the flashing button to start the operation and watch the magic. Your Cricut will use its sensors to look for the registration marks and then it will cut around your design. When the cut is all finished, unload your machine mat, flip it over onto your work surface, and gently roll the mat back to release the glitter cardstock. 
For any remaining white mats, select the glitter cardstock setting again and set the pressure to more. Use the brayer to adhere the next mat's matching cardstock to the green standard grip machine mat. Now little bits of glitter can stick to the blade and cause trouble, so open the clamp and remove the blade housing. And then you'll want to clean your blade. My favorite way to clean a blade is to just ball up a piece of aluminum foil and then press the plunger on the blade housing to make the blade poke out a little bit at the bottom. And then I carefully poke the blade into the aluminum foil a whole bunch of times to knock off any glittery bits. It also removes adhesive and oxidation and all those sorts of things that might interfere with a good clean cut. Then release the plunger and put the housing back into the clamp. Then load your machine mat and follow the same steps to complete the cut. Release the design from the mat and keep track of any tiny pieces, like the flower middles. Follow the same steps to cut the rest of your mats. When you go to cut the vinyl, be sure to use the premium vinyl material setting with more pressure and adhere face up on the same mat. For the plain cardstock, use the medium cardstock 80 pound material setting and set the pressure to more. Option B, without print then cut. If your machine doesn't have print then cut or you have trouble with the process, I found a good alternative. Prepare the SVG and PNG using the same steps as before. There's just one extra step. Select the image you want to sublimate and then click duplicate. Use the operation menu to change it to a basic cut piece. Then use the color box to change it to white so it will cut from white glitter cardstock. Click make it and follow the same steps on the prepare screen to toggle the print then cut mat. Adjust your material sizes and combine any mats as needed. Select the first mat and click continue. Again, click send to printer and use the printer drop down to select your sublimation printer. This time, leave Add Bleed off, but toggle on Use System Dialog and you click Print and minimize your Cricut window to find the Print Dialog box. Adjust your settings and print the sublimation design just like last time and then let it dry. Now here's the big difference from our last technique. Instead of staying on the Print Then Cut mat, cut the next two mats using white glitter cardstock. Take the shape that matches your design and get ready to sublimate with your fan on or your window open. All right, so preheat your Easy Press or your other heat source to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius and set the time to 45 seconds again. Place new white cardstock on the pressing mat. Put the white glitter cardstock piece face up on top and carefully lint roll it to remove any loose bits. Then put white butcher paper on top and preheat the piece for 10 seconds. Remove the protective sheet and move the piece over to let it cool a little. Put your printed design face up on the cooled white cardstock. Place the shape face down on the design and line up the edges. And then add heat resistant tape to secure the cardstock to the paper really well. Now don't tape over the main design area if possible. Sometimes the tape can interfere with a transfer. And then flip the project over. Put white butcher paper on top and press the design for 45 seconds without any extra pressure. Lift the press straight up to avoid ghosting. Remove the butcher paper and let the design cool for like 10 to 15 seconds. Flip it over, peel off the tape, and reveal your shaped sublimation design. So now you have two options for sublimating on cardstock. Can you tell the difference? <laughs> the one on the left was made using print then cut and the one on the right was sublimated on a pre-cut shape. I'll share more thoughts on the pros and cons of each approach and some cardstock fails later on in this video. Step three, assemble your sublimated cardstock design. Whichever sublimation option you pick, the sloth card goes together the same way using adhesive foam dots, craft glue, hot glue, and clear acrylic sticks. Start with the flowers. Use your fingernail to slightly curl the petals upward. Layer a set of three petal pieces with a circle of the opposite color on top. Add glue between each layer to hold them together. Repeat for the other flowers and set them aside to dry. 
Stack the wreath pieces face up in the correct order so the leaves all match, and then place the stack face down. Flip the largest layer over so it's face up to the side. Place adhesive foam squares on the back of the white glitter leaf circle. Remove the protective papers using tweezers. Flip the layer over and line it up over the brown layer and press it in place. Attach the top wreath layer the same way. Turn over the attached wreath layers. Put craft glue on brown leaves inside the circle. Center the sublimated design face down over the glue and press it in place. Turn the assembled layers over and set them aside to dry. Use the same technique to arrange and layer the scroll pieces with brown on the bottom, then white, then green. Then weed the vinyl sentiment and use standard grip transfer tape to carefully add it to the upper offset section. Put them together too. Check the written tutorial for details. And then add the completed banner to the topper with foam pieces. Glue the banner and flowers to the wreath. Turn on your hot glue gun, flip over the cake topper so the sloth is still oriented correctly, and put on your finger protectors. Hot glue the clear acrylic sticks to the left and right wreath sides. Make sure they're straight, parallel, and about two inches apart. Hold them to set. Your sloth cake topper is now complete. Step four, show it off. And here's our finished sublimated cardstock cake toppers. Remember my butterfly and the watercolor designs use very similar techniques. You can find all the details and extra tips in the written tutorial over at jennifermaker.com slash 537. So there you go. You can definitely sublimate on cardstock with or without print then cut. I think both options work well, so try both if you can and decide which one you prefer. And I'd love to hear your choice. Now, remember how I mentioned that not all white glitter cardstock is the same? I got great results with most of the brands I tried. My usual favorite, Recollections, worked really nicely. Now, I haven't tried Honey Plum before, and the results look about the same as Recollections, so this is another good option. And I knew you'd ask, so I did try the Dollar Tree cardstock, and well, Nope, I can't recommend sublimating on Dollar Tree cardstock. The cardstock, design, and butcher paper basically all melted together. It was a total mess. I'm not sure if it was the glitter or the cardstock itself or some other part of all of this, but it just really didn't work. But I know some of you don't have sublimation tools, so I also tried some new printable white glitter cardstock. It worked well with print and then cut, and the colors are really, really nice. The surface is smoother than the normal glitter cardstock, and the shiny pieces don't come off at all. This is a fantastic option to make some really glittery prints. Details on how to get this and all of the cardstock that I used are in my materials list in the video's description. Overall, my biggest tips are to use high quality paper. Take your time sublimating to get a lovely transfer and most important, have fun. And if you want to make the butterfly design with the rolled flowers or customize the watercolor framed topper, check out the detailed instructions with images at jennifermaker.com 537. You could even add your own photo. I've got a photo of my cat Butterscotch. He is literally laying upside down in this I hope Butterscotch likes his cake topper, and I'll, I guess he probably shouldn't be having cake. So maybe I'll just hang it above his favorite napping spot instead. If you want to learn more about sublimation crafting, it is so much fun. I encourage you to check out my sublimation cookbook guide, and it's over at sublimationcookbook.com. It's got all of the times, temperatures, and pressures for all the things that you can think of to sublimate onto. And I also have a Facebook group just for sublimation, which is a great way to see all the fun that you can have with it and all the amazing things that you can make. Whether you're new to sublimation or not, please come join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. I'd love to have you come ask questions, share ideas, and get inspired. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.